my name is Cynthia, and today I'm going to present the work I did during the summer called Characterizing Microbial Communities in a Serpentinid Posted Aquifer in the Coast Range of Elite. This summer I worked with Dr. Sader. It was very fun, and today I'm going to share you what we did. Well, first, our story begins in a very special place called the Coast Range of Elite. You might be thinking, what is the Coast Range of Elite? Well, it's a geological formation located in California that represents a part of the oceanic crust that has been uplifted and exposed. So now it's closer to the surface. And you can think of the Coast Range of Elite as a cake <laughs> of layers that has melted and then cooled, creating different layers of materials. Just as in a cake, you can find different flavors and textures. In the coast range of your lip, you can find different layers of rock that tell you the history of how the ocean floor was formed. So, in this place, something magical happens, a process called serpentinization. And no, it doesn't have anything to do with serpents. <laughs> and uh, let's see what this is about. So then, what is serpentinization? Well, it's a geological process where different types of rocks that are rich in olivine and pyroxene, which are minerals usually present in the oceanic crust, react with water and produce serpentine, which is green, and that's why it's called serpentinization. And during this process, other products are generated, like hydrogen, methane, and heat. And this hydrogen is very important because it's a source of energy essential for chemiosynthetic organisms to thrive in these extreme environments. So where does it happen? It happens mainly in the ovulates, like the coast range ovulate, in hydrothermal systems, like the bottom of the ocean, and in arid regions. In general, it's places that have a lot of heat or a lot of pressure. But you might be thinking, what does this have to do with space and astrobiology? Well, Similar reactions are likely occurring or have occurred in the subsurface of Mars and beneath the oceans of the icy moons of Jupiter, like Europa, and Saturn, like Encelado. Because, as we know, there is evidence that there was water in Mars in the past and ultramafic rock. So it is very likely that a serpentinization process happened in this place. And the same with Europa and Encelado, as they have subsurface oceans and ultramafic rocks. And another important application of this process is to look for biosignatures, because the products of the microbial activity in a serpentinizing environment might serve as biosignatures during the search of life on other planets in the universe. So to understand the serpentinization process in this place, water samples were taken from the coast range of Elite, and specifically from a well called CS Wall, there are other 11 wells, but this was the one where, where we worked from in this summer. This is a well that has special conditions. It has a lower pH than the other wells. It has a higher concentration of some elements. It's closest to seawater. It is the deepest well. It has very little oxygen and it's nutrient poor. And the general methodology we follow is to extract the water, use a glass fiber filter to filter the water, extract DNA, and make DNA sequencing. So during this summer, my work consisted on analyzing the metagenome of these samples, and I did bioinformatic work. So what I did first was from all the giant database <laughs> that we have, uh, that Dr. Sandler gave me, I choose the most abundant genes. Then I look for these proteins in the cake database, then in the metapsych database to see in which microorganisms these proteins are present. And if I didn't find enough information in the other databases, I use Uniprot. So I found very interesting things. The first was the most abundant taxa present in these wells. Uh, we have five groups like the Colobacterales, Sphingomonodales, Rhizobiales, Detebacterales, and Microbacteria C. And in another result that Dr. Saylor shared with me, we can see that during the analysis of the metagenome, the main groups that come up are Actinobacteria, Clostridia and Rhodospiriales. And when we analyze the ribosomal RNA, we can see that there are Bacilli, Clostridia, and Sphingomonadalis. 
And also I found some of the main pathways that are present in, this, in these wells, in the samples. For example, we have the reductive acetyl-CoA pathway, the methanogenesis, the glyoxylate metabolism, the citrate cycle, or there are other pathways more related with the capacity of the bacteria to interact with their environment, like the quorum sensing, or other pathways related with the ability of the bacteria to survive in these harsh environments, like the pathways related to the resistance to arsenate and arsenate. And I also found some of the most abundant proteins. Uh, most of them are related directly or indirectly with the serpentinization process. There are many dehydrogenases, oxidoreductases, kinases, and some proteins related with the capacity of the bacteria to survive to these extreme places, like the heat shock proteins. So now I am going to talk to you about the three most important pathways that I found during the summer. The first one is the methanogenesis. Methanogenesis is basically when the bacteria transform carbon dioxide and hydrogen into methane. Uh, they do it because in these environments, the energy resources are very limited, like in the serpentine-hosted aquifers. So they need to find new ways to obtain energy to survive. This is why methanogenesis is very important here. Then we also have this pathway of the acetogenesis via reductive acetyl-CoA pathway, where basically what happens is that we have carbon dioxide and hydrogen, and the bacteria transform it into acetate, using acetyl-CoA as an intermediate. And finally, we have the formate dehydrogenase reaction. Formate dehydrogenase is an enzyme that what it does is that it transforms formate into carbon dioxide while also releasing electrons during this process, which are essential for many metabolic processes of the bacteria that live here. But what is the connection between these three processes? Well, I am going to try to explain it to you. I want you to imagine that these microorganisms from this environment are part of an autosustainable city, okay? And first, we have the methanogenesis, that is going to be like a plant, like a factory, that takes the waste gas, that is the CO2, and transform it into methane gas, which is then used as fuel for the city, okay? Fuel like for the cars and everything, okay? This is the first part. Then we have the acetogenesis that is going to act as a recycling plant that takes the same waste gas, the CO2, but instead of making methane, it produces acetate, which the city uses as energy for the city, for the buildings and everything. And finally, we have the formate dehydrogenase that is going to act like a waste collection truck that is going to take trash <laughs> that in this case is the formate and turns it into air that is the co2 while releasing at the same time small batteries of energy that are the electrons which are going to be needed for both the methane and the acetate plants to operate efficiently so as you can see all these three processes are interconnected between them so the conclusions that I come up with during this summer is that, first of all, in the serpentinization environments, the reactions between the water and the olivine-rich minerals produce hydrogen and formate that are essential to be used as fuel by anaerobic microorganisms. Then, these same microorganisms are capable of using the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen to make methane through methanogenesis and acetate through acetogenesis and they use the formate dehydrogenase reaction to oxidize formate into CO2, releasing electrons to power these other processes. So everything is interconnected. So by understanding how these processes develop on Earth, we can look for biosignatures in other places to try to find life in other parts of the universe. And that is all. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you to Dr. Saylor and Kelly and everyone. <laughs> Great job, Cynthia. That was fantastic. I love your city metaphor at the end. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Great job, Cynthia. We have Sanjoy's hand up right away for others. Please raise your hand or ask in the chat. Go ahead, Sanjoy. Cynthia, I love the presentation. I love the energy, love the colors. 
just yesterday I was analyzing the chemistry of the CSW old well. So this is perfect. Really? <laughs> and, and what I'm finding is that there's very little hydrogen compared to other similar wells. And so I'm surprised that you found methanogenesis there because the hydrogen concentration are so low, um, which is intriguing. And I was wondering, you mentioned acetogenesis. Do you find any other metabolisms that are active there? Sulfate reduction, anything else? Or, or, or did only methanogenesis show up? I didn't find from sulfate, like these were the main, the main ones. Other pathways were more general, like pathways to produce amino acids or the citrate cycle, more general things. But the main ones were methanogenesis and the acetogenesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs>